We all know that buying mini sets gives you the best value for your gold. But what if I told you that buying the golden mini set may just give you even more value for your gold? That is right. I have found a way where buying golden mini sets in Hearthstone may actually give you even more dust per gold value than just buying regular packs. And I am here to show you how to implement this golden mini set strategy to get you the most value out of your gold. Let's start off with the truth. If you're just buying a regular mini set, not the golden one, you are making the best value for your gold in pure gold to card value. For 2000 gold, you get four legendary cards. That is value. If you spent 2000 gold on packs, you would only get 20 packs, and that doesn't even guarantee you a legendary card. So if you have the 2000 gold, it makes sense to just buy the mini set. But I hear you say, the golden mini set costs 10,000 gold. Why would I even consider buying those? Well, I can think of four reasons why you should buy the golden mini sets and use this strategy, and I can guarantee that at least one of these applies to you. Reason one applies to you if you only play one or a few classes. If you play a uh, druid, for example, well, for one, I already don't like you. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, seriously, have you reconsidered your life choices? If you're only playing one or two classes, chances are that in one expansion, you already have all the cards you want in that expansion. The golden dust you have will just pile up for you and you probably don't have anything to do with it. If you are one of these people, then this golden mini set strategy will give you the best value for your gold. And I'll explain why in a little bit. The second reason concerns the cards you want to play. This strategy will let you choose the cards you want to play in the most efficient way possible in terms of using your gold. No more hoping that the cards you get from packs are the cards you want to play. This strategy will give you the dust to craft any card you want. The third reason concerns you if you are a do your daily and weekly quest and leave type person. If right now you're just playing to complete your quests and you're not trying to push ladder or anything like that, then this strategy will allow you to save up your dust until you do decide to start playing more seriously again. And the fourth reason is that this strategy will actually give you the most dust possible out of the gold you have. So what is this strategy? Let's go over the fundamental game mechanics that we are going to exploit so we can properly understand this strategy first. I don't want you to do something just because I said so and you don't actually understand what's happening. Whenever you have a golden card in Hearthstone, when you disenchant that card, it will always give you the equivalent or more than the equivalent of the base cost of dust back as a refund. This means that no matter the rarity of the golden card you disenchant, you can always recraft the card in a non-golden cosmetic, and either you'll net zero dust from that interaction, or you will actually gain dust from that interaction. There is no reason to be afraid of disenchanting a golden card, because if you decide you want to use that card in the future, you would have gotten enough dust to re-enchant it from disenchanting the golden card. Albeit, you'll have to play it without the golden tint. But something you may have not realized is how much value you actually get from disenchanting golden cards compared to regular cards. For common cards, you would normally get 5 dust from disenchanting them, but you get 50 dust for disenchanting golden commons, or in other words, 10 times the amount you normally get, or 10 dust more than actually crafting the golden card. For rares, you get 100 dust for disenchanting golden cards, rather than the 20 you would normally get from disenchanting regular rare cards. Only 5 times more dust, but it's still really good. For epics, legendaries, and signature cards, you only get 4 times the amount of dust to refund when you disenchant them. So for epics, you get 400 dust instead of 100, and for legendaries and signatures, you get 1600 dust instead of 400. Basically, this means if you disenchant a golden epic, legendary, or signature, you only get enough back to recraft a card of the same rarity, and nothing more. It is these disenchanting values that we'll be taking advantage of in this golden mini set strategy. You see, each mini set does cost 10,000 gold, or the equivalent of 100 packs. Since on average, one pack gives us 102.71 dust, according to the Hearthstone wiki, if we were to buy the mini set, our 10,000 gold we spend must give us more than 10,271 dust. So let's start with the first golden mini set in our shop and see whether we can beat this number with our strategy. The strat is really simple. All you gotta do is scroll all the way down to the bottom, pick a golden mini set, and buy it. Please not with real money though. The first mini set we'll look at is the Darkmoon Races mini set from the Madness at the Darkmoon Fair expansion. This mini set has 66 cards. There are 16 unique commons, 14 unique rares, 1 unique epic, and 4 unique legendary cards. But if we convert these card numbers into dust values, it looks like this. 
For the commons, you get 1600 dust. For the rares, you get 2800 dust. For the epic, you get 800 dust. And for the four legendary cards, you actually get 6400 dust for a total of 11,600 dust total. And you see this same pattern in the next few mini sets. The Anixia's Lair mini set from the Fractured and Alteric Valley expansion has the exact same distribution. 16 commons, 14 rares, 1 epic, and 4 legendaries, for a total of 11,600 dust value if you were to disenchant every card. The Dead Minds mini set from the United and Storwind follows the exact same pattern. 16 commons, 14 rares, 1 epic, and 4 legendaries, for a disenchant value of 11,600 dust. And lastly, for this first section is the Wailing Caverns mini set from the Forged and the Barons expansion. 16 commons, 14 rares, 1 epic, and 4 legendaries for the same 11,600 dust disenchant value. If you were to spend 10,000 gold on 100 packs, you would get maybe 3 legendary cards. If you were to buy any one of these 4 golden mini sets and disenchant every card you got from them, you would get 7 legendary cards and have enough for an epic card on top of that. And you might be thinking if you open more packs, you can get more epic cards. Do you really want Tar Slick? How about Instrument Smasher? Or maybe for some reason you want the stars a lot. I, th this one's pretty fun actually, I can't make fun of it. The point is you can be a lot more selective of the cards you want to play. And it gets even better. We've only looked at these four mini sets, but look at how many more we have up here. Let's start with the Path of Arthas mini set. It's kind of weird. It got released right after the Death Knight class was released. In total, there are 49 cards with 26 unique cards, 12 different common cards, 8 rares, 3 epics, and 3 legendary cards, combined with 1 diamond card that you actually cannot disenchant. If you were to disenchant every single card that you could, you would only get 10,000 dust and that is not enough to beat our average pack number. But besides the Path of Arthas mini set, you can get even more value from the mini sets after its release. The Return to Naxxramas mini set from the March of the Lich King expansion has 73 cards in total. There are 38 unique cards, 16 commons, 17 rares, 1 epic, and 4 legendary cards, and also 1 diamond card which I've talked about before, you can't disenchant. If you were to disenchant all of these cards, you would get 12,200 dust. That is the most so far. And then for some reason, the next two mini sets decided to make the numbers of cards smaller. From the Maw and Disorder mini set from the Murder at Castle Nathria expansion, there are 16 commons, 14 rares, 1 epic, and 4 legendary unique cards. In total, 66 cards though, out of the 35 unique cards there. If you were to disenchant all of these cards, you would only get the same 11,600 dust. And the same goes from the Throne of the Tides mini set from the Voyage to the Sunken City expansion. 66 total cards, 16 unique commons, 14 rares, 1 epic, and 4 legendaries. Combined gives you a total of 11,600 dust if you were to disenchant them. These mini sets are all in wild, but what if we scroll up here and go to our standard mini sets? These ones can also give you great value for your gold, but the problem is that they are in standard, meaning that if you only play standard, you can't really disenchant them. Of course, you could selectively disenchant some cards, but then you won't be able to get the best value out of your gold right away. You are not getting that immediate dust boost if you buy these compared to if you buy a wild mini set. For example, Sanitize is totally necessary in Control Warrior. This is 100 dust in itself. And it looks like this Yogg on Titan will be played for a long time. And that's 1600 dust right there. Starting from the Audio Apocalypse mini set from the Festival of Legends expansion, there are 73 cards in total with 38 unique cards, consisting of 16 unique commons, 17 rares, 1 epic, and 4 legendary cards, combined with 1 diamond card that you can't disenchant you'd get a total of 12,200 dust. And it's the same for the Fall of Udarar mini set from the Titans expansion. 73 cards, 38 unique cards, 16 commons, 17 rares, one epic, and four legendary cards, with that diamond card here that you cannot disenchant, for a total of 12,200 dust. The Delve into Deep Home My mini set from the Showdowns in the Badlands expansion is a bit weirder. There are 73 cards again, with a total of 38 unique cards, but this time there are 17 unique commons, 16 rares, 1 epic, and 4 legendary or signature cards, and of course that 1 diamond card that you cannot disenchant. This gives us a total of 12,100 dust, 
100 less than the other two. And of course, the mini set that is going to release is the Dr. Booms mini set, 16 unique commons, 17 rares, 1 epic, and 4 legendary cards, plus that one diamond card. Buying the Return to Naxxramas mini set will give you 2,200 more dust than you would get normally if you were to just open packs. That is enough for an extra legendary card and then some. But what if you don't have that much gold? I know 10,000 gold is so hard to come by, but I know a way where you can spend less gold and still get more dust and legendary cards. And I show you how in this video right here. It'll save you so much gold and will give you so much more cards you can play in Hearthstone. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you around.